Let's reframe how we think of the budget. I think this is the number one thing that you really have to spend some time to focus on. Really take stock. What is coming in? The what is coming in, we often know what that is, what that looks like. That's not the problem. It's often what's going out. And I and I always say that one of the things I always say to the people that I coach is that take a take your bank statement and just sit with it and just go through, just have an exercise where you sit through with the highlighter for two or three months and you just highlight where's this money going where's this money going where, where is this who is this and you quickly find out how you spend your money where you spend your money and it's always interesting sometimes it's a good thing but sometimes it's quite shocking where you see where your money goes and you didn't even realize it but once you see it as a pen paper exercise you see it clearly it's so easy to identify where your leaks are, but also where the opportunities are to do better. So that's the number one thing. The budget is telling where your money to go. So you've got this money coming in. How, where, how do I allocate it? Where should it go? And I think that's really key to uh, managing money. That is your number one tool. And you do need to be using it. It's something... It takes a while to get right uh, because you must review it from month to month. You must be saying, okay, this month there are birthdays. This month there is a, a school trip. This month there is recording in progress. There is a, a variety of things. So I always say a budget is never a perfect uh, uh, document that you use. And also, you know, Choose the style that works for you. Some people do well pen and paper. Some people love Excel. But for me, I started off with pen and simple pen and paper. Just what's going in, what's going out. That's it. That is all. Um, I think. I think that sometimes we want to make things very complicated. Actually, make it complicated. It's it's very simple. What's going in and what's going out? Use your bank statement sensor. Really spend some time to really assess, like, where is this going? Where is that going? What's happening with this and what's happening with that? So how much are you spending on something? How much are you allocating to, to okay, for groceries, for argument's sake, for fuel? How much am I spending? And it and I say take about three months or so worth of um worth of a statement only because month on month it can look different particularly with um the jobs that are driving around your fuel consumption changes so much and it is it 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 is difficult sometimes to say okay for fuel i'm only going to do you know this is only what i can do so always have room for those things that are variable costs the variable bills that are going to change however a three-month period should help you to roughly ascertain how much are you actually spending on fuel, put that amount. But in the budget, you're always going to have give, always have give, but that's what the budget is going to allow. So the first few months, you know, it took me over a year, to be honest, to get it right, but it was guiding. It was a good guiding tool, ever evolving. I say, before you get your next paycheck in, take a look at what's happening in the next month. What are my fixed costs? What are those? Those are always there. Make sure you know them. Those are non-negotiable. These, This is them. What are my variable costs? Your groceries, your fuel, your, I don't know, any other transportation you might use in the house. Uh, you know, there are various other various costs. What are variable costs? What are those things? And what am I pitching them at? What is, what am I, what's the sideline in the budget? So before you get your next pay, assess how did I spend my money? How did I, what did I do? What, what went wrong? One went right and carried forward into the next month. So the budget, I cannot emphasize how important your budget, your budget is. Also, it helps to track what you're spending. You'll be amazed how much you didn't realize that you're spending on certain things. I'll give you an example. So, uh, you know, quite a few of us uh, will have jobs where we're driving around and you keep going to the corner shop and you get, oh, today you're getting a drink. It was really hot last week. I'm getting a bottle of water. Today, tomorrow you're getting, oh, it's really cold. I'm getting a coffee. Or the other day you got a chocolate because you were just, you know, bored and you needed one. But all those little amounts, when you now sit down with your budget and you're tracking, you start to see, oh my gosh, the corner shop 
is saying that I spent 20 pounds. How did that happen? And starts to make you aware. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have those things because actually some of those things are essential. But then you know that next month, actually, I need to put 10 pounds for, uh, you know, when I'm out and about and I need to get various things. Or better still, I'm going to buy within my weekly shop a packet, a multi packet of crisps. And I'm going to take them and they're going to be in the car and I'm going to move around with them. The same chocolate, rather than buying it from the corner shop, get multi-packs, you know, five multi-packs, five, uh, there are five in a pack. You've got one a day if that's your thing. What I'm just trying to illustrate is that you don't necessarily, a budget is allowing you to see how you're spending, what you, what you, what you prioritize, and then enables you to make decisions is this really a need or is this a want is this something that i need to continue with or is this something that i need to perhaps verify so budget 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 a track and review uh keep tracking it keep reviewing it i cannot labor enough the point about budget so that's really important now going on to um the the big three things in the uk that are going to make um that, that are going to really these things you do need to get a hold of them a handle of them you need to understand them and really assess what what you're doing with those that it's really important it's really important for you to take a look at what things are and what and how you're doing on them they are your biggest uh costs and they're the ones that are going to they're going to make or break you really and they need to be assessed regularly so let us go into those three things right i don't i think the slide is lost but i'll keep going. so those three things the first thing that you'll see um is accommodation and then there's food and then there's transport now we're going to take a look at these three areas but three these three are your major expenses here in the uk and you need to be able to manage those things according to what income you have according to what you can afford at this present time so do make sure that you are really scrutinizing how much you're spending in each one of these areas now i'm going to go into them and we're just going to discuss briefly and i'm hoping i'm giving you some tips that are going to be useful for you as well so with accommodation what you need to really consider is you know how much is the rent you know, what is the size of the property? Am I getting a one bed, a two bed? Can I share a house? Can I, do I leave, do I have to live in a, my own house? Uh, do I really need to live in a house? Can I live in a flat? Can I, there, you know, you really have to think about what is it that I need right now and what is it that I want? Some things we want, but we do have to bear in mind that there is a time for everything. Take your time to really establish your finances before you take on big commitments in terms of accommodation. Um, so for sometimes a house, if you've got a family, a house seems really nice. It's got a garden. That is nice. But with the house, there come extra costs, more expenses, higher council tax, higher bills. So it's not just about um, the space of the garden it it does come with a cost so do consider that that is it for right now am i living in a, a property in a space that actually makes sense to where i am currently with the money that i have in also with if you are looking at a, a apartment versus a um a flat versus a house it's your council tax it's your bills so everything goes up as much as it sometimes also there's this false thing that happens where you look at um the you know the real estate is telling you the cost and the rent seems like oh it's just 50 pounds difference or it's just 10 pounds difference or it's just 100 pounds that would justify me having a house versus a flat however what you haven't taken into consideration which you really do need to take into consideration is that the bigger the house the more energy you're going to use so your electricity your gas that's going to go up. You're going to pay considerably more than if you're 
living in a flat. Your council tax, the banding of a council tax is determined by the size of the house and the number of people that live in the house. So that also will go up. So yes, the actual initial rent amount might seem, the difference might seem neg negligible. However, do remember that it comes with all the extra things and they come at a cost. So really consider your accommodation, see what fits for you right now. Now with, with accommodation, I've put in there um, some of the tips that I have uh, that one of the things that they say in the personal finance world is that your rent should not exceed 30% exceed of your income. So you should be trying to pitch your rent at about not more than 30% of your income. Um, it's not always possible. It's not always realistic, but it is a good measure. But basically what's that saying? Look at your income and decide at the income that I am currently at, does this amount of rent make sense? How much give is it giving me in the budget to then consider all the other bills that I have to pay? It's just not about the rent. What about all the other bills that come with it? So do remember that. And if you're fortunate enough to live in a in a room or a flat that con that includes the bills, also think about that. Also, moving to a house, don't forget, a lot of houses are unfurnished. You're going to also have to then look at how much furniture you're going to have to get furniture for that place. I know some flats aren't as well, uh, but houses are more so likely not to have furniture. That's another cost. So always consider those things and really take stock of where you are eventually you will get to where you want, but what do you need right now versus what you want? Now you'll hear me always talking about needs and wants because yet again, that's one of the fundamental things about managing money well. One of the biggest traps we fall into is, as, is the need and want. Is something actually something that I need or is something that I want? It would be nice to have this, but actually what I can afford is this, or I need shelter, but does that mean that I need this kind of a house or do I just need a house? You know what I mean? So it's really important to really always be asking yourself, is this a need and you want when you're budgeting, when you're spending, when you're making decisions that, um, that are linked to money, always have that conversation with yourself is really key. Now with the, on accommodation as well, one of the things, another tip that I have is that make sure that you're using the best deal, you're, you research on your service providers. And by those, I mean, your, your, you know, the, the people that provide you with utility, with them, um, sorry, your utility bills. So gas, electric, uh, water, um, what else is there? Uh, if you were going to have Wi-Fi, all of those things, do make sure that you go onto comparison sites. There's a supermarket, money, 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 market, supermarket, money, market supermarket i'll get it right i'll put it on there um there's you switch there are quite a few um websites that you can take a look am i getting the best deal you do need to to learn how to do it it's not something that i was comfortable with at the beginning because i believed you know if the person for electricity says this is the amount for this house they know what they're doing i'm gonna go with it but actually in this country there's a beautiful thing where if you research you can go to that service provider and say actually i found this provider and they said they would give me that could you give me that or something better and actually eight out of ten times they can make the deal cheaper or they can make it to equate to what you have so do you spend some time taking a look at who are your service providers what are they offering you is that the best deal on the market Another tip that I have on, um, on around the house, around accommodation, just with electricity and gas, just be mindful how you're using that. Simple, simple things like turning off lights where you're not, um, taking off things in the plug, in the actual socket, as much as it's switched off, it's if it's still in the socket, it's still using energy. And I know it will seem so manual, so small, but those are all the little things. Those are the little leaks that we constantly have to keep on top of to make sure that we are managing money well. So another thing is, you know, one of the big things also on, on when we were trying to pay our debt and trying to get our finances right is I quickly realized um, that there are certain times that if you use certain appliances are better. 
for argument's sake, for us. And you have to do your research. Washing our washing machine, the best time to use it was overnight. That was the cheapest rate of energy. So we would always wash our clothes overnight. Now, you know, the tendency is to wake up and do it or during the day you're doing it. But at those times, you're potentially using the highest tariff. Therefore, you're going to consume more. And that's, you know, it's not efficient use of of your energy. So whilst all these things might seem impractical and make things difficult, but you're saving money, you're managing your resources well, you're actually going to find that your bills are going to go down. If you, most people now have a meter for electricity and gas, take a look at that. That's another easy way to see. You'll see if all the tea, you know, the TV, the microwave, the everything is going in the house, you'll see how that meter will be moving. And it actually makes you realize actually at this amount, this is how much I'm spending. You start to think about things. So it's really important to take a look at your energy use because gas and electricity are high. They will be high. And it's just about managing that. Am I putting the gas on? Is it, have I tried to have a to have a blanket have i tried to to just wrap myself in a blanket wear a jersey have I, am i still cold okay i'm still cold i'll put the radiator on don't just automatically put the radiator on because it's there it's you're using power your bills are going to get higher so do manage electricity and gas there are various ways to manage that and to minimize your bills so do make sure that you're using that and also using um efficient um efficient um what you call them efficient appliance appliances so for instance as many of you know now using a air fryer uses less less energy than turning on the whole oven so it's worth the while so things like that so it's really about taking care of those small things they do make a difference i'm going to go on to food now this is this one is a silent killer because we think we need all the food in the world we need to have it but actually it's one of the worst categories because there's a lot of waste that happens now when you're looking at your food uh, bill uh, full budget make a realistic budget as much as as much as it's good to minimize things some of it isn't realistic i found that at one point i had set a budget that was just not realistic it just didn't work for the amount of people in the house or the prices of food it was a great idea on paper but realistically every month we're always 50 pounds over which meant that that budget wasn't ideal so set a food budget review it decide what are needs and wants if you've got children, really think about school holidays. As you know, kids are op opening up the fridge, always saying they're hungry. What have you done for the summer months? Have you put, have you allocated more money into those pots because it's necessary? So do really have, take stock of what it, what your food budget looks like and what you're allocating. Now, my tips on this, I mean, to be honest with you, food budget for me, I could go on forever, but I've put down some here, just a few. So meal prep, understand what it is that you and your family actually eat. What is it that you eat? What makes sense for you? And make a list and go to the shop. Don't just go into the shop. You don't know. You're just going there anyhow. You're just buying anyhow. That has got to stop. Make sure you actually take stock. What is it that we need? This is what we're going to buy and try and stick to that. Now, another thing that I love to say is that buying non-branded items is key. Now, this is something that I think growing up in Zim, I think, I don't know, it wasn't, it was never highlighted for me anyway about the differences in brands, so to speak. So one of the things that I always like to educate people is that a lot of the food comes from the same factory. And whilst, yes, some things you can taste the difference, don't get me wrong, there's certain things that I will not swap to a non-branded branded items, but a lot of the things, a lot of your starches particularly will be the same, your, your pastas, the non-branded versus the branded will be very little difference. So do take a look and do your research, try and figure out what am I willing to swap because the difference in a, a can of chopped tomatoes for 30p a non-branded supermarket um, 
um, brand to one that's a brand for 60p, that's double the amount for chopped tomatoes. Like, so do make sure that you have tried the non-branded first. Now, I know a lot of people will always fight with the tomato sauce. Haynes is better than this and all sorts, but that's tried out because I think sometimes also we think that we don't like it. And then when you do try it, you actually like, actually the difference is for what the cost price, I will swap it over. So where you can swap change to non-branded, buy as much non-branded supermarket value stuff as possible, that is going to drive down your food budget quite a lot. Now, shopping at the cheaper supermarkets, so your main brands are always going to be more expensive. Aldi, Lidl are your friend. Um, they have deals. I know now, though, the big supermarkets, are they try and get, you know, get things to be at sort of the same level. But overall, you'll always find your Lidl, your Aldi, are cheaper than the main brands of um, so whilst it might be convenient that you know the branded one is the closest the nearest one to you those pennies those is going to make a massive difference to your food budget so do consider that another thing is avoid buying anything that's pre pre-prepared so chopped up uh peeled for you anything that someone has had to do for it to be better for you costs you money so for what I mean by this is like a mango that's chopped up into cubes versus the whole thing, not just not touch, you have to do the work. Now, whilst it might seem convenient and easy and oh, the money's not that much, it is more expensive. So do watch out for that. That's it's the same. So for instance, one of the ones that's quite a marked difference. Now, I know some people for health reasons will argue the point, a chicken breast, um, if you get one without the skin, you're paying a lot more for one that has skin. So just, just take a look, take some time to really understand the different prices that are in a supermarket. Now, another one that I, I like and is an easy one is that when you go shopping in a supermarket, take a look at the bottom shelf. The top shelf is going to have more expensive things and the bottom, the middle going down, they put the it's a marketing tool and it's because it's at your eye level. That's what you're going to see. You're going to grab and go, but make it a habit of taking, just put your eyes down just a little bit. You'll find that most times, and that's where the value stuff is. The value stuff is usually actually at the bottom of the shelf. So that's it. It's a marketing tool that has been designed by marketers that works. So don't, uh, don't get caught out on that. Um, we spoke about convenience shops. Convenience shops are exactly that. They're convenient corner shops. Yes, the chocolate, the water, the the Coke, the this, the that might seem cheap, but actually they have put a markup for their convenience. They're more expensive. If you want those things, plan ahead, buy them in bulk, buy them from your Lidl's, your Aldi's, and then you have them stocked up. And let now, this one is a hard one for most people, but less meat is your friend because meat is expensive uh, where you can. Uh, and especially if you're not bothered by not having meat, that's another a good way to save money. So yeah. And also my last tip on food, and as, as silly as it might sound, it works. It's in our psychology, is don't go food shopping whilst you're hungry. If you go food shopping whilst you're hungry, you're going to actually buy more. That is a psychology and it's a fact and I know it because every time I've gone hungry, I buy a whole lot of stuff that wasn't on the list. So don't do it. Thank me later. Transport. Um, the things considered for transport, my time is running out. I'm going to be a bit on this. Uh, is just consider what kind of car you have. Consider what's necessary. Consider what you need for right now. Uh, we all have dreams and aspirations. You will get to where you might want to be, but start where you can. Um, maintain the car. Always remember the cost of the car. Remember there's MOT, there's car tax, there is uh, car insurance. Remember all those added costs. So where it is possible, I know a lot of jobs is not possible. Where it is possible, live within a good network, transport network. And if it's not for, sometimes if you're a family, 
then make sure that you're living in a good network for the rest of the family so that they can get on the bus, they can get, they can walk to school, they can get on the bus to work. All of those things really do consider it back to accommodation. Take a look at the practicality of certain things. Those are really important because those all add up, right? Um, yes, Viana, that is a good one. That is a really important one. If you do, it is cheaper to buy a whole chicken and get the breast out from it than buying the chicken breast. A lot cheaper. Um, anything that's done for you in the supermarket is costing you more than necessary. I almost think that we need to go back to the uh, how our grandparents used to do things. Like that chicken thing, I actually thought about it the other day. I said, now I understand why people used to buy whole chickens and cut it themselves. Like, it, it's cheaper. Anyway, I digress. Um, so transport, some tips for you. Um, now fuel goes up at the weekend. So try and fuel up before Friday. Another thing that I learned, so from about Friday to Sunday, the price tends to be higher. So try and fuel up before Thursday. So your Monday to Thursday is your best month for fueling up. Um, always make sure you, you also don't just go to the garage that, that you see straight away. Do understand in your area which garage will be relatively lower um, and do be mindful though the cheapest is not always the best for your vehicle so I, I say that with caution but also don't pay more than you have to if you've got like four garages around you take a look at on average which one it usually has because you know will, will be a bit less than the other so do take a look at that and the other thing that i would really suggest is that you save up for your mot the mot is once a year so do make sure you've got money saved up for it it shouldn't it shouldn't come as a surprise a car needs mot prepare for it and this is where also maintenance of the car is really important so that you're also not shocked when you get to mot because you know if you rely on your car and it fails MOT and it's at the last, um, it's on the last days, you will not be able to use that car. So do make sure that you do that. And also another thing, and I know it seems expensive upfront, try and pay your car insurance your tax for the year instead of using the options of six months. I know it seems like a lot of money, but it will save you more money mm -hmm. than paying it per month or paying it uh in six months uh um, in six months now money traps to avoid now these are the things here in the uk that i've identified as things that trip us up with our finances so the use of credit card personally i am team avoided with with by all costs it sounds amazing it sounds like it can help you but actually you're going to end up paying a lot more than new bargains. I mean, the APR on that, the interest you have to pay is in the 20s, 20% 20 for 19, you know, 19 plus percent that you're paying for something. Rather save up and wait to get something if you can, than use your credit card. Same with thing with debt. I know this country loves to give away debt and that can be quite a shock to the system because you get letters, you get emails, people offering you this card that you can get, you're eligible for this card and uh, you can buy this and pay for it later. And whilst all of that sounds fantastic and sounds like it's going to put less pressure for you to buy something right now, what it's doing is adding another line item to your budget, another thing that you have to keep paying for. So we need to get back to the old school way of just actually we save up for something to get it. Now, there are things like Klarna and all of these clothes websites and food websites that have gone mad and are offering you to pay for your your meal later and for your food later that sh that shouldn't be an option that is always going to trip you up and cause you to pay more for something that you shouldn't so do try avoid those um another thing that i have here is um live living above your means now this is a really big one it's it's so simple to do you don't even realize it sometimes you you know 
you started off thinking I'm going to be sensible. This is what I'm getting. I'm going to keep with this in amount. But then, oh, I need the air fryer that I spoke about. Oh, um, maybe if I get a new this. And oh, they've said that I can put it on credit. And then before you know it, you are living above your means because you've got a whole lot more outgoings than you have with the income. The income is remaining the same, but the outgoings are just piling up. So really be careful not to live before above your means. Your aim is to live below your means to create a gap for you to be able to save, to be able to do the things that you wanted to do. But it's so easy. It's, uh, it's, there's a term that's called the lifestyle creep where once you're seeing that you're earning more money or you have a spouse and they're two of you earning money, you start to live at the level that those two incomes can, that those two, two incomes can provide. But what it's doing is instead of actually you living below and giving yourself this margin to actually do other things, to save, to invest and all of that, what people are tending to do is then to have, um, go above and creating a big a big problem here you're creating a big problem here and it's really important that we try mm -hmm. and be living below and not above above our means it's really really important um so that's a big trap here it's a big trap in the uk and that is due to the amount of things that you are you are given or a, 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 a you have the ability to be given on credit. It starts to make you, um, it really does start to make you think you can do all sorts of things quite quickly, but slow. You need to be slow and approach. You will get there. You will get those things. We just have to be, instant gratification has killed us. Social media is killing us. Um, comparison is killing us. And we just need to stay in our lanes and do what we need to do mm -hmm. until we, a position to be so that you that that so that that barrier stops so yeah uh living above our means is a big money trap that we you know we all need to be really careful of now if you you've got two adults that are working it's you know in my experience i shared earlier about me and my husband being made redundant um i think that it's really important to try and live on one income as much as possible to have all your bills and everything to be in one person you know if ever anything happens you're assured at least that your bills mm. are a lot more manageable when you're relying on one your expenses are relying on one but also imagine a world where if the other your other you know your your husband wife's money the other the income that's coming in the house doesn't have to go to the bills. It can go to the projects, to the investments, to the savings, to all the things that you actually want to do. So do strive not to fall in the trap of thinking we've got two incomes now. Let's get more things to pay for. If anything, try and live as though you have one income. Um, money trap, another money trap is missing payments. Do not miss payment. Now that you have acquired these things on credit, don't miss a payment. Now, one of the big things, I know someone might might have mentioned credit score, and one of the things that will affect your credit score is missing payments. That's one thing that sure will mess up your credit score. Don't miss payments. And also, some of the payments, if you do miss them, they have really big consequences. So for arguments, like I'll always say to people, no matter what, do not miss your council tax payment. That one can land you in court. So be very mindful about your payments. Try and make sure you make your payments. But missing payments is going to affect your credit score, is going to affect um, perhaps the credit that you might want in terms of a mortgage, in terms of actually just getting a, a cell phone, a, a phone on, on contract, any contract, missing payments, try and avoid missing payments. Um, regular and, and plan spending, it's quite easy to be on Amazon and be purchasing things because they look affordable. It looks like you can afford it, but that's going to always set you off budget and keep you out of managing your money well so please try and stick to what you say i know it's really easy to spend i find here yeah, it's so easy to spend every day and we just need to have managed that situation better 
Um, another thing, someone going back to the credit score, another thing about if you are trying to get some uh, open up a line of credit and they refuse you, don't keep trying to open up one because it is damaging your credit score. And actually, you're not going to get one for a few months. So actually, just if one bank has refused you for a loan or for some kind of contract, you're better off waiting a few months before you try and try another place. Because every time they run a check on your credit and it's declined, it is going to negatively impact your credit score. So if you do go somewhere and they've tried and they've said that you're actually not eligible, work on just waiting a little bit um, and try um avoid keep opening so and i said buying on credit that was the other one i said now how do we create a um financial order how do we manage how do we make this how do we make our finances more manageable so this is my final slide um these are some of the things and i know some of it i would have i would have said in passing so in, understand what your needs and your wants are live below your means instant gratification is not your friend um you know really just take some time and save up and take stock of what you need what you want is it necessary to have right away set goals setting goals what do you want to achieve is really important because you have something to work towards and that's going to allow you to be able to figure out how much in your budget you're going to save if you've got a goal do have a goal because not having a goal is aiming you're, you're aiming i just want to have savings savings for what and how much smart goals we all have heard enough about smart goals have them and as a family agree on what goals you have particularly husband and wife is really important for your finances to be in conversation and agreeing what you're doing because if you are one is doing this one is doing that the potential for you to come together and create a solid foundation financially and be able to do solid things financially it's you know it really it does you know it does make a difference so do try be in alignment for that um, organizing your money we talked about that already and preparedness now most of us here will have family at home we need to make sure that we have an emergency fund we need to make sure that we have some money put away in the case that you have to leave and go to Zimbabwe to for something that's happened there but also if you have people that you're looking after, there's money for that that needs to be saved. But even for yourself here, if for any reason, and one month you don't have enough hours, how are you going to pay your bills? You need to have a cushion that is there available to make sure that you're able to cover your own bills and any other responsibilities you have. So it's really important to always have what we call an emergency fund, some money that is set out, that is ready to grab and go, that might make your life. If your car breaks down and it's not working and you need it for work the next day, you need it for your work. Do you have a pot of money that you can reach out to to give to the mechanic to fix the car so you can get back on the road to earn more money? So it's so important that you have that emergency fund ready, waiting for anything, because this life, there will always be something that will happen. So do make sure you have it. And the last thing is educate yourself. There's so many resources. There's so many books, YouTube videos, workshops, educate teach yourself how do i manage my money this is what i have how best to do things there's so many things available at the moment and i just think that the biggest gift you can give to yourself is to educate yourself oh there's so many other things and there are other vehicles and other things that we can consider but what i am going to do for today is leave it at that i thought it was really important to first take a look at those fundamental things that that can steal or they can, um, they can steal your money. And those things are the ones, whilst they look small and insignificant, those are the fundamental, the foundation in managing your money to be able to do the other things that we can discuss uh, on another session. So let me just drink water. That, that was um, today's session. I hope the tips in the discussion was useful. I'm going to share.
Hi, let Ruby. me um let me go in that i couldn't it wasn't uh, as good as i applied let me just see Hi, Ruby. All right. Um, thank you so much, Rumbi. That was awesome. Uh, I think we still have got a few questions in the chat. Uh, there's one particularly about building credit score. Um, so Emeka says, what's the best way to build credit score? I've been told to get credit cards. However, I don't need credit card um, because I live or spend within my income or budget. I have one credit card, but, do uh, but, doesn't, but don't use it as I ha have no need for it. So maybe if you can touch on that. Okay, so credit score. Building a credit score is paying your bills on time. That's the surest, one of the surest ways they need to, your credit score is made up of, um, one of the assessments is, do you pay people back on time? And I know there's a bit of a, a chicken and hen situation because sometimes people feel that in order to prove that I can pay back, I need to get something on credit and paid back so that they can see I'm a, I'm a reliable individual because that's what credit score is really about. They want to see, are you a reliable person to be given any money from anywhere? So I think when you start out, it's managing to make sure that every bill that you have is paid. That's important. Um, pay your bills on time. Uh, what's also important is if you, you're, you know, the contracts that you might have, so a phone contract, for instance, make sure you're paying those on time. Those matter. They do add up. So I think at the beginning, the biggest thing is just paying things on time. Don't let anything miss mm -hmm. out payment. That's important. And as you, as you are able to get uh, things on line of credit, do make sure that you're paying those on time. And that you are finished, you are saying you're paying them on the time that they said that you're going to pay them and that you pay it. I mean, it, it takes a while and it's it's a difficult one because only up until you actually get the credit can you then show them that you're reliable. But also it's based on your account has been open for this long. You So the longer also you've been using your accounts, the system, it will show, okay, this person under the account has had the account opened up for two years now. Okay, maybe let's try and give them some credit. I think, you know, the accounts look pretty decent. We can do that. So one of the things I always say to people is that if you've been in this country for a very long time, you one of your first bank accounts that you opened up, don't close that account. Even, even, if, if, even if you've been here two years, try not to open and close that account a lot. Even that will show that, why does this person keep opening up, closing up accounts? What is the problem? Is it because they're not able to manage their accounts? Don't go into overdraft, whether agreed or not agreed. That also affects and builds up your credit. So, those are some of the things. It takes a while to build up credit. It's about your history and how you've been managing money. I hope that helps. I know sometimes it is a bit frustrating because how are you expected to show that you can do it without being given the credit? Also, actually, how to build up a, a credit card if you're eligible to vote be do go on the um electoral roll that's really important as well that is important to um it, it strangely counts so if you are able to vote do make sure that you've put yourself down to vote and you do vote it makes a difference i don't know if we have any other questions i'm just looking um, hopefully the network improved i do apologize for that um, um yeah um i think emeka has got a question raising their hand okay this hi hi emeka please do ask go ahead Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ruby. And uh, thank you for your time also. And thank you for all uh, the financial insight you've shared with us. Uh, it's, it's just about this credit score because uh, it's actually a challenge for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I wrote in the chat, uh, I've been here since May 2022. 
uh, of course, uh, I have a little knowledge, a little background of uh, accounting because I, I read accounting, so I have a accounting degree. So, but again, I understand that going on credit is not actually the best if you can afford or save up for something. So, uh, from day one, I don't like to go for credit. I don't want to buy anything on credit. So, whatever I I want. I take my time to save for it and then go for it. However, unfortunately, in the UK, uh, I think it's a credit economy whereby you need to uh, buy stocks on credit, make you go into debts that you don't really need. So, uh, I, 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 and I, you know, you need your credit score because the dream of uh, every family here is to, you know, get a home uh, as soon as you can afford a mortgage. So, but it all boils down to your credit score. Now I registered, I've, been, uh, I've participated in uh, voting. I've won a, uh, one address since I arrived. Uh, I've been I've been paying my bill off, but that's, I've never missed and I don't even intend to me because of course I know the implication. However, however, in all of this, the credit score has not gone up. Okay, uh, I, uh, lastly, I, I, I have going through YouTube and other stuff, books, then I, 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 and I was advised to get a credit card. I got a credit card, but I don't want to use it because also it's not a free money. You know, the danger in having a credit card of 2,200, um, you know, you can easily buy something that you don't really plan for because there is a credit card in your hand. So uh, I was just thinking if there is any other thing I need to do or I'm missing, uh, if you have that knowledge, you can share with me. If not, have you I'll have you pulled out a credit report at all? So have you used like Experian to yeah, see? Yeah. Okay. I I I, I registered with Experian, and also mm -hmm. there's this one called uh, Credit Karma. So, yeah. So uh, those ones always. Uh, but what they always do is to advise me get a credit card, get a credit card, get a credit card. <laughs> I don't want to go for these things. <laughs> And and that's that's the issue. It's it really is a chicken and hen situation because, you know, it's 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 like when you're looking for a job and they say to you, you don't have experience, but the only way you're going to get experience is if you give me the job. It's the same the same problem that you'll find. Yeah. And if people are disciplined and, you know, I, I if you are disciplined enough and you can use your credit card and pay it off every month, yet again, it will help it might boost your credit score but also it depends what you want to use the credit score for because sometimes what you might find is that uh, someone asked about a mortgage about the score now the, the the score does matter however the lender might look at various other things and take whatever score that you have into consideration and it doesn't have to necessarily be excellent i think if you're not in the, so with Experian, they give you like a barometer where it's like red or it's like green. If you're not at that red point and maybe you're in the middle, amber, green, not necessarily excellent, you might find that you might be able to get a mortgage anyway with it. So don't always think that I have to wait for my credit score to be excellent in order to do that. But what if you do have a credit score that is low even some people with low credit scores have gotten a mortgage actually but what you would need to do is go to a mortgage broker who would be able to advise you on what they would be able to get deals from providers that might not look at your credit score in the same way that a mainstream bank will do so i can't there isn't a best score because it depends with all the other and also depends all the other information what we're eligible or how much are you earning so in terms of a mortgage um a score number might just make sure you're not in the red but having said that the people who've had uh, jccs or who have still gotten a mortgage through various lenders so don't disqualify yourself in Mecca, you might have to use their credit card, but you do have to pay it off. Someone suggested something. Some people do, do use it for everyday things and pay it every month for a bit. I'm keen on that because I'm not disciplined enough to be able to make sure I pay back. But if you are, do do it just to build up your credit score. But also it depends, Emeka, what you want your credit score for. If this, you know, there's various things that you can need a credit score. So don't always also think that 
um, like I've just given the example about mortgages, there are mortgage pro mortgage advisors who can help get people with poor credit scores to get mortgages. So just, yeah, also take a look at what, what it is that you want with this credit score. Um, and um, if you ever pulled up a report, and if it's not the, if you go one further, the free ones will give you basic information. If you pay for one, it might be able to show you also if there's anything that you did in your past. And I tell you what, credit scores are a bit funny. You could, it could be that someone once found that they hadn't paid a parking ticket, uh, you know, a long time ago and they didn't even realize. And that's what kept pulling their credit card. Or someone else has found that in error, they've said that they didn't pay something that they did pay and then they had to challenge it. So you might have to actually, if you're really concerned and you think that you've worked and there's nothing that's working, pay for a credit uh a uh, credit score report that gives you the, the more of the finer detail of what it what happened with your credit and you might be able to see what's stopping or blocking the improvement of your score okay thank you so much i appreciate it thank you for your Thanks thank so you so much everyone for attending today i hope it was useful um now there will be another session. Um, hopefully, we go into the. There's still some comments about um, going into investments and things like that. But I just think that it's really important that we look at the bare basics first. That the foundation is important. You can catch me on Instagram and on uh, on Instagram, um, both under R S Mutopo and also on Harvest Family Finance. They share a lot of information, a lot of tips, and we also have a website that you can go on we've got money we've got, we've got a blog there uh you know blog saying how much how we paid off debt how also some, and tips like some of the ones i've, I've spoken about. so do visit our website do follow me on instagram as well and thank you so much for joining today awesome Rumbi. uh thank you so so much um that was really helpful and insightful i'm sure everyone who was who joined us today um really uh, got something so yeah, please do follow her on Instagram, um, visit her website. We will share her details on, on the various uh, Tulia WhatsApp platforms. So maybe um, you're joining us for the first time. Uh, we are Tulia Group. We help uh, migrants to settle in the UK by offering legal advice and holistic support. Um, so our services include legal advice on UK immigration. If you need any visa applications, as a skilled worker, visitor, dependent, uh, maybe you got a refusal on your visa, we can help you with that, appeals, administrative reviews, and so on. That's what we do at Tulia. Um, and uh, we recently introduced a new consultation uh, of 30 minutes with 99 pounds plus VAT, which you can book uh, and you can book via our website, which is www.tulia.org.uk. So thank you everyone for joining us and we hope to see you next time. Um, if you want to maybe engage with us, please do follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, on YouTube. We're going to be posting uh, this uh, video we were recording. So please look out on our YouTube channel. Um, you can also volunteer with us or you can also join our WhatsApp groups or you can say hi to us on WhatsApp. We'll be very happy to help you on anything that you need help with. Otherwise, thank you all for joining us tonight and uh, see you next time.